Okay, welcome back at the Allen Chadwick Garden again. We're going to both hone in and take a step back regarding cover crops. Uh, let's take a bigger step back and talk about how you fortify the soil. You've got one base constituent, organic matter. You've got a, top, a couple different routes to go. You can grow cover crops as we have here in this bed, grow them up, drop them down, chop them up, flip them in, stand back, let it rot, and you fortified your soil with both nutrients and carbon, good to go for your follow crop. One route you can go. The other is you can grow a cover crop, skim it off, take it out to compost row, make a mixed compost, and then, very importantly, apply a previously made compost to the bed because when you're growing a cover crop and you're skimming the material off, you are basically uh, exporting, harvesting, uh, mining nutrients and carbon, so you gotta replenish. The previously made compost is your replenishment like that. So you can grow, you, no, you must grow cover crops. You must do it frequently. We try to do it almost every time we turn the bed over. Not always in the summer, uh, but almost every time we'll grow a crop of lettuce, we'll chop in the remains, we'll sow a cover crop, quick cover crop, maybe only gets like this tall, something quick like in the summer buckwheat, uh, and then drop and chop, flip it in, wait about a week, 10 days, a as it rots down, you're watching it, when it's rotted down, you replant like that. So it's this cycling of organic matter via green manures and or compost. So that's the step back and Again, there's two routes to go. You can grow a cover crop as a green manure, you turn it in, and what you get from that is, well, you get two things, but the principal thing you get is a quick flush of nutrients to feed the follow crop as it gets off to a good start. Yeah, you're sequestering carbon, but a green manure with its succulents is more about nu a nutrient flush, a little less about a carbon loading situation. Compost is just about the opposite. It's got nutrients, yeah, but they're slowly available, not quickly available. And what it is, it's all about carbon loading, carbon in the soil uh, like that. So you've got these two routes to go. That's the step back. Let's do the hone in. We have a couple beds here that we intentionally sowed in about a half a dozen di different variations on a theme with cover crops. Uh, right in front of me here, I've got a nice admixture of oats and uh, a field pea. And this plot up here is a plot of buckwheat. Let me just say this was sown the first week in October. Here we are, Thanksgiving week. Buckwheat along with Sudan grass are two of the best warm season cover crops. October into Thanksgiving, not really even on the central coast here of California, not really the warm season. And in truth, this is the latest I've ever sown buckwheat. And it did, well, not half bad. It grew, it grew, matured and now as you can see it's starting to feel the effects of the frosty nights and uh, it's starting to yellow out. It's time to take it down. Uh, and let me just praise buckwheat a little bit here. I call it a mighty mite. Small in stature, what's it like two, two and a half feet tall. Quick to get there, maybe 30, 40 days from sowing to maturation. And when you look at it, it's just, it just, it's, the totality of its skimpiness belies the power of it as a, as a green manure. Just this little bit of biomass, but chopped into the soil, it just really improves soil structure and gives you that nice granular structure you want. And then the root system, as in, really? Where are the roots? It's like, got to be kidding me. And yet there's a lot of research showing that one of the very positive effects of buckwheat, the roots, is that they uh, uh, secrete acids and enzymes that solubilize phosphorus. That is, they make phosphorus more available. Phosphorus is a nutrient that's difficult to keep available in your soil for your crops. Buckwheat is your friend in that regard. So I've got this and I'm going to take it and drop it down and then chop it up. Let me just do a little section here on this side of the bed here. I'm just 
flailing at the base a little bit. And this is, you know, kind of general. Doesn't have to be 100%. It might reach a point shortly where you could say, hey, good enough. A little more. So I, I knocked it down more rather than less. Now I'm going to exert a little energy here and chop it, chop, chop. I'm going to break it up. I'm going to reduce particle size. What is the advantage of doing that? Well, the smaller the particle size on any green material, the greater the surface area, the softer it is when you open it up. The inner innards of a plant are more succulent than the waxy exterior and it makes it an easier substrate for microbes to get on and decompose. So we drop and we chop. And again, the bigger and coarser the green material, the more chopping you might want to do. Um, let me just redistribute a little bit. Let me also note that if you look down here, when we sow this cover crop, we put on a very thin layer of straw. Straw, not hay. Hay has seeds, not wanted. And it's a little bit rotted down. Um, and we're kind of fortifying the soil with a carbon source, that light layer of straw, a more nitrogen rich green material, the buckwheat. And then additionally, I've got some compost here that I'm going to put on. The compost, it's a little bit of a kind of a synergist here, just to, it's got nutrients, sure, but more it's to add microbes that will help to aid in the quick breakdown of the green material. Let's take a look at a handful of compost. Um, this, my friends, is a beautiful thing. Black gold, arguably the richest commodity on the planet. And if you look at it, you know, you can see it's of intermediate, I got a rock there, but it's of intermediate particle size. Some small, some larger like that. One other aspect about compost is that it's greasy, greasy, greasy to the touch. And that's good. It helps to aggregate or bind together the individual particles of sand, clay, and silt in your soil, creating beautiful aggregates. So all that, and I'm just, I'm putting this on more like you would put salt and pepper on a dish. Just a little condiment, add an additive. And I'm gonna spread it thusly. And then I'm gonna just take this material and flip it into the soil. I will not cover it 100%. And that's all right, because then I'm gonna mulch off with straw to protect the surface of the soil, yeah but also to keep this green material from desiccating and drying. So in the immortal words of the beetles, oh blah dee, oh blah da, life goes on. Let me just do a quick, few quick passes here. I like to get a good 70, 80% of this tucked in. Let's say in this section here, we're good to go. Next, a little protectant here. I'm gonna spread a thin layer of straw again. Again, the straw, especially at this time of year, should there be rains, protects, physically protects the soil. And it will start to rot down. When we come in the spring to plant, it'll probably be fairly well rotted down. So it serves as a protectant, but also another eventual addition of organic matter. I'm gonna take it one more step here. I'm gonna sow a co another cover crop right into this. Let me grab my seed. So what I've got here is a jar full of mustard seed. Uh, this is a brown mustard. There are white, yellow, and brown mustards, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Uh, small seeded and quick growing, a little slower than uh, buckwheat, maybe 60, 70, 90 days till it gets, well, 
about like that. I say that because that's how variable the growth is on mustard. It could be thigh high, could be chest high, uh, depending on a bunch of different factors. But what I'm gonna do is just take a real small amount of this and scatter sow it into the mulch. I'm actually sowing at a, what you might call from an agricultural perspective, ridiculously insane thick density. And that's all right because I don't expect all the seed. This is just a kind of quick and dirty way of sowing a cover crop. The soil's been roughed up a little, throw down some mulch, scatter sow some cover crop. Most of it will fall in between the cracks in the straw, get onto the surface of the soil, the mulch protects it, we'll come and apply water. And in three to five days, as is often the case with uh, a brassica like mustard, you've got emergence or often growing again.